AI here, AI there, but how to actually take advantage of it and create a game from inception to completion using AI, okay? So, first of all, who am I to be talking about this kind of topic, okay? Um, so, I'm Marco Pauleta, a video game developer, okay? These are some of the games that I have uh, created, okay? This is part of my uh, professional experience, as you can see. So, I've been a developer for the past five years. I've used uh, Godot for something like five and Unity for something like four, approximately, okay? Um... So, indeed, we're going to be using, in this case, ChatGPT for this, but you can use any other kind of chatbot. I know Gemini, uh, literally, whatever you want or use. I'm part of the plus plan over here, but this is not uh, mandatory, okay? Uh, but, well, it's pretty, pretty useful, okay? So, the first thing that uh, we have to understand are the different steps that we have to follow in order to create our game. And, of course, okay, everything, okay, it starts with... An idea, okay. Ah, I thought that was gonna be like a light bubble or, or some kind of emoji there, but there isn't. So everything starts off with an idea. Now, of course, AI cannot think for us. If you just tell the AI, uh, give me an amazing game idea, it can generate something for sure. But here is the part in which we have to think of the most ourselves. So, uh, for example, just so that you can see here some of the games that I have created, so for Match 3 Pass. So what we have over here is a basic Match 3 game, similar to Candy Crush, all those games. Uh, but in this case, I also wanted to kind of experiment with uh, those kind of games that were kind of popular in which you also had like obstacles running at, at you and you had to meet a certain objective, in this case, matching 15 pink gems before you were like killed by the enemy. Uh, and that was the main idea. So what happened there was that I basically merged two ideas together, match three with trying to pass some kind of also. In reality, it wasn't 100% original because there were games that were already doing that. But well, I tried to adapt it. Let's take another um, example. So um, mm -mm. let's take, for example, shake it and find. So in this case, oh, we cannot really see it, but Yes, here in the screenshots we can. So the idea is that we have this kind of, of pool table, okay? And uh, we have to press on the different uh, pool balls, okay? Um, in order to basically collect them, okay? And we had um, th to, to tap three identical items to gather them, okay? And that would clear the uh, slots over here. And the idea is that you have to collect all the keys to pass the level. Once again, something very simple, but would still a kind of be different or I try to be different from the games that existed. So the main thing here is that ChatGPT won't be able to do that job for us. So we have to write it on ourselves. So of course this is just an example, okay? For example, create a game idea combining a merge three mechanic with a car racing game. Once again, this there are still a lot of games about it, but just for you to have a, an example of what it can do, okay? And the cool thing is that it will actually start dropping you a lot of information, okay, that maybe you're not going to really take exactly like that and create it 100% as it is here, but it will serve as inspiration, okay? So that's the key thing. And the key thing here is that you have to start to think of AI as, let's say, your personal instructor or your personal mentor, whatever it is, because it has memory, so you can iterate on these things. For example, if you want, I can also give you a GDD, basically a game design document, a prototype loop, a monetization, free healthy version, a more roguelite spin, whatever you want. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So just for the sake of this video, I'm going to do something way simpler. Okay, but I what I tell you is use a canvas to create a coin collector GDD or game design document. A coin collector, I just want a player that can move around and uh, can collect coins, as simple as that. Uh, because I want to actually have something playable here. I want to be able to create a match three game with all that. But anyway, the good thing that when you tell to use a canvas, you can actually press here on edit and you can see it here. So it's kind of, well, uh, easier to, to see and all that. So as far as I can see, it's basically that is pretty good. Uh, and also you have here like more tools when you're using canvas like add emojis, add final polish, reading level, adjust length, suggest edit, well you have some stuff that's pretty useful. So now let's say that we do have our game idea. I think that we also have a name over here that is just well coin collector in this case but uh, 
let's say here give it a name and the cool thing is that here it should actually update the document to uh, have some kind of come here golden dash okay coin collector game sign document so we can actually take that name open up go dots, okay and start creating our project once again this is just an example okay of what uh, you can do okay uh let's do it right over here and what i'm gonna do is okay uh create it to the character png with no background uh something minimalistic and cartoony so we now have the idea what we're doing here is generating the asset okay we'll just generate the asset for the character as an example okay so for example here we have the character okay and i've also told you to in the meantime generate the uh, to the 8 weight movement and to give me the instructions in this case it's taking a little longer for a better answer so that's cool and let me just get this guy over here and i will directly import it inside of code okay here it is and now let's see uh, the instructions that we get provided over here okay um so i will assume go to 4 with a uh, character body 2d and as you can see you will actually have the script to copy paste and you will also have the no setup with the usual character body a sprite 2d collision shape etc so indeed now we've actually entered the second stage here which is okay programming okay so let me actually follow these steps of course i'm gonna be using the sprite with just generated which is as you can see pretty cool and here's the code that it has generated okay um it even told me to generate the different input path settings, but just to save some time, I will use UI actions. They will work just as fine. UI left, down, and with this, it should just be working. I'm going to save the scene and play it right away. And with this, the scene is working perfectly. Something that I do want to note is that it used perfect code. Literally, this is the cleanest way to do it. So that's really amazing because sometimes it really throws away uh super bad code like with this could be have also done with 20 lines okay but of course if you can do something with less lines and still keep it simple and keep it clean uh, that's something that you should definitely do okay so that's pretty pretty uh amazing and something that i really want to point out here let me position myself right over here um let's say that you did not understand some part of this code let's say explain this code further and let's see we can close this canvas because we are not using it anymore and it will actually do that okay um and in reality it's gonna go literally line by line okay it explains for what extends is to the first variable to literally line by line what this is doing so once again uh, ai some people when they, they see uh, other developers use ai they say oh ai is coding for you or anything like that but are we telling here AI generate the game and the game is made? No, we have to follow instructions. We had to actually think of the of our own idea. Um, so we are on control of the of the project of the product. Let's say we are still the ones that take the important decisions. Once again, this is just a, a, simu a simulation, of course. Um, but this is just a tool that help us uh, work better, easier, faster, and ultimately save resources and develop better games at a lower cost. So that's important. So take a look at here, like literally all the explanation that, that is done for seven lines of code, approximately like nine nine lines or whatever it is. Pretty amazing also to, to learn and all that. So now we'll actually provide like a more complex prompt or actually I, I'm actually requesting for uh, a, a, an answer that will require multiple steps. Like how do I continue now I have the player, but I want all the rest. I want to move around uh i want to essentiate coins in in the scene and be able to collect them so you actually it will actually have to tell me to create a main scene create a spawner create a coin so a lot of things so it should actually be a pretty long message with a lot of information so indeed it's telling me to create the coin scene with the usual nodes that you would expect an area sprite and a collision shape um it's then connecting here to a corresponding body enter signal it also tells me that okay my player should be in this group um so it's actually using here an auto load to handle coins it, this is amazing okay it's a super good practice once again if here you don't know what an auto load is, is you can tell just okay i've never used auto loads before what is it 
So you can also kind of learn in the go and you don't have to be anymore like just like for example watching a the tutorial or anything like that. It, or it can at least um, kind of go along with the tutorial. Like maybe you're following the tutorial, the instructor or the tutorial didn't go that um, that uh, deep into something that you really wanted to understand more or it assumed you had to know something and you don't know about it. So it's a tool that really simplifies and um, really helps a lot, okay? Um, so as far as I'm checking here, literally all instructions are amazing, literally. They are all amazing. So let me actually follow all this step by step and I will be back. And well, here we have it, okay? It's super amazing. Uh, first of all, I've asked you to generate the coin sprite, okay? Uh, which I imported and set up in Godot. And also told to directly generate the spawner because here it, it actually didn't do it. It kind of just spawned one here, but didn't make much sense. Uh, or actually, it told me here to create some spawn points and then spawn it here, but I didn't want that. I wanted to uh, spawn them like this, basically, when the game starts. Okay, I wanted to spawn those coins. Um, and here it is, okay, so I followed the instructions. They were literally perfect. Super easy to understand, super easy to follow. The, the code, as far as I have seen it, it's very clean, okay? It's very clean, maybe not perfect, but it's pretty good. For example, here, like this random position is calculated. Well, it's okay, but I think there could be maybe better ways rather than have here an spawn area that you have to type manually. It should take the window size, uh, but those are details that you can actually tell it. But in general, the logic is pretty good. It actually implements a, a, an autoload that's amazing. And the, the, the most important thing is that if I run it, it works. So I can move around, I can collect the different coins, even the number of coins that I have collected are printed here. So as you can see, in a matter of maybe, maybe the, the, yes, the video is going to be like 12 minutes, but maybe I've spent 20 minutes doing everything. So it's still pretty good. And it also suggested like what to do next, okay? Um, over here, for example, suggested um, at the hard level showing, okay, the coins, at the gold, at the timer, hazard, so we even have like a roadmap to follow. So let's say that the programming is, I wouldn't say completed, okay, uh, but now you have a clear roadmap, okay, uh, of where you want to go. So this is just a matter of iterating and continuing. Yes, iterating and working, working, working. And I want you to add here a third step, which was art. Of course, we still have to add sound effects and a lot of things, but we've really been able to go from nothing from a black screen to a game in a matter of 20 minutes. Uh, once again, don't be afraid of AI. Uh, be afraid of AI if you don't know how to use it. Okay, we haven't just typed the prompt and a game was magically generated. We actually had to thought of a game. Okay, of course, it was pretty simple, but it was a simulation. We still had to tell, okay, I first want to create the player. I wanted to do this. I had to myself add the different notes. I had to understand it. Maybe if I didn't understand some parts of the process or some parts of the code, for example, I didn't know what an overload is, the AI would explain it to me. So it's pretty amazing. And it was also helping me with art. Of course, those are not game ready uh, art to be published on Steam or in Google Play Store. They are not, they are at least placeholders, inspirations. If I like that style, I can send it to an artist, for example, and tell you, okay, uh, I like this style, create maybe something like this, create an animation, I can hire a freelancer, um, I can do it myself, I can learn how to do it myself. So as you can see, really AI uh, expands all boundaries, okay, expands all limits. Uh, literally, um, like it breaks with every single excuse that you could have in order to learn how to create games and to start creating your own stuff uh, because it really helps a lot. Uh, so that's what I wanted to say in this video and I hope we can see each other in the next one. Bye bye.